So recently I've been getting a lot of DMs over on Discord about how can I make a certain kind of chess piece or how do I make a staff? People are seeing my guides and they're seeing that I use these crafted items quite frequently and they're wondering how they're going to make them themselves. Now, I tell most people, well, you can just go and buy them and it's probably going to end up a little bit cheaper if you're not going to be learning to craft long term. But a lot of people insisted and said, hey, I just want to learn how to craft because I think it's cool and I think it'll be useful in like, say, the beginning of a league when there's not really a lot of items sitting around. Crafting in general can make you a bunch of money as well if you know what to look for. So I decided to sit down and show you guys how to make your own influence six link chess piece, staff, weapon, whatever you'd like. And the only thing that I ask in return is that if this video helps you out, make sure to give me a like. And on top of that, make sure also to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this. And without further ado, let's get into crafting this chess piece. So I just want to make it clear that I am just using leftover stuff that I had sitting around um, from just playing the game, right? We're going to take this chess piece here. It's actually an extra that I bought a while back when I was crafting this crit chess piece that I made for my Hit It Very Hard build. And I just bought a second one because I just happened to see it for cheap. This is an eye level 85 hunter influenced astral plate. So the very first thing that we need to do before we do anything else is first you're going to want to bless up the implicit here. It can go all the way up to 12, so let's get it up to 12. So if the item does have an implicit, make sure that you roll it to be as good as it can before you start crafting. I mean, you can do it later, but it doesn't matter. I prefer to craft on nicer looking pieces of armor. And the second thing that we're going to do is we need to get this chess piece to be as high of quality as we possibly can so that we can six socket and then six link it. So the way that we do that is through two things. First thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get some resonators and some perfect fossils. Let's hope that nine ends up being enough because if it's not, I'm going to have to make a detour and we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to buy some fossils here in a moment and then I'll have to cut the video and you know, then let's just hope that it goes well the first time. So we'll use a couple of these. We're not going to use them all right away because chances are maybe I'll get it early. 27. Ow. Wow. I wow. actually got high enough on the first one. So that was a little bit lucky. It's normally not that lucky. The idea is, is that you use this perfect fossil to get up to 30% quality. I generally take anything 27 or higher. So now that we have that quality on here, we are going to scour the item itself. And we're going to take this over to the bench and we're going to craft quality on it. Now, the highest quality that we have available for cheapest are these two here. We're just going to do dexterity and we're looking to get at least 17. I know it seems like a lot of chaos here, but you will save the money in the long run. And of course, when I'm recording a video, I get insanely unlucky. Dude, I'm going to spend like 40 chaos here just trying to get 17%. Jesus. It's normally not that bad, by the way. It's like one out of four, and I literally just hit the bottom two out of four like 20 times, but that's just how crafting is going to be. Wow, we actually almost ran out of chaos doing that. Okay, so now that we have the high quality armor, this is where we're going to attempt to six socket at first. Now, I'm probably just going to end up speeding this up after I'm done talking because it'll take most likely the majority of these judging by my luck already. But the idea here is that we're just looking to get as high of quality as possible so that we can get the highest chance to six socket and six link. The higher the quality is on the item, the higher chance that you have to get more sockets and more links. So cue the fast forwarding. Never mind, actually. As soon as I say that, we get it. Same thing with six linking. So this might take some time as well. But what we're going to be doing is just sitting here and most likely fast forwarding, but it should not take all 1300 of these with it being a 45% armor. Let's let's really hope that it doesn't take that long to do. So cue the fast forwarding now. Okay, so that only took about like 400 ish fusing. Not too bad, right? So we got our six link. Now at this point, this is the part where you would just color it, you would get whatever you need, but now we're actually going to begin crafting it for real. So depending on what you'd like to do, if this was a staff that you wanted to say craft for my burning beefton build, you would just be using resonators and you would just be using single scorched fossils to get the stats that you want. This particular chess piece that we're going for is one that has the plus two crits for attack. There's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, first off, I'm just going to show you the way that is most typical for the average crafter. And what you would do is you scour this. We're still at 27% quality, but you're simply going to just roll the item with a transmutation orb to make it um, blue. 
alterations until you get the correct modifiers that you want, and then potentially hitting it with a regal orb depending on what you want to do here. The way that this goes is that we're looking for a useful modifier. Right now what we're looking for are just good stats, meaning life, we're looking for armor, we're looking for the attacks have critical strike chance modifier as well. However, that's a tier one of the hunt roll, so it's quite rare, you're not going to see it very often and we're looking for like resist in life, right? So if we get a chess piece roll that has this good modifier on here, we will hit it with an augment orb. Okay, so this actually rolled two pretty good stats. In the case of something like this, we're going to hit it with a regal orb just to see what we can get. Now this is a pretty solid chess piece, right? If you were very early in the league and you were trying to craft a crazy chess piece like that, and you got this chess piece right here, I would highly consider just taking this over to the bench, putting another resist on it, and just sticking with this until you get more currency. Although the attacks have added crit is very nice, this chess piece would carry you for a long time, especially early on in the league. So if you got something like this, I'd just go craft some other resist on it and just use it as is. However, for our purposes, we're going to scour, we'll make it, um, we'll hit it with another transmutation orb. Now you might have seen in another video of mine how I was hitting them with chances before, and while it is extremely unlikely, I can no longer recommend that you hit these with chances, as generally, you might unfortunately run into a situation where you get a unique, and then you can't do anything with it, and the chess piece would be bricked as happened to me. So you'll notice that there are some other good modifiers here, like this is percentage increased life, yeah? So normally this method is going to be much slower and much more arduous to try to get the actual modifiers that you want. The chances of you rolling one of the hunter modifiers that we're looking for is extremely low, like extremely low. You can go to a website that I'll link down below called Craft of Exile, and you can choose the type of modifier that you want, whether it be Hunter or Redeemer or Conqueror, whatever whatever one that you need, you can choose that type of armor. It'll show you the percentage chance for you to get it. So in general, when we're looking for this modifier that attacks have extra crit, it's gonna be very, very rare to just get out of alteration orbs, right? It's something that you're going to see one out of a few hundred times at the very best. So if you just sit here and you're using these, I mean, you can get useful things like you can apply an additional curse, that's pretty useful, right? You can apply an additional curse is definitely a good modifier, but this didn't roll very well. It's not something that we're looking for, so we're just going to continue with it. Now, that being said, if you do happen to roll over a very good chess piece that's not something that you want, consider selling that chess piece and buying another base and starting from scratch. Because when you sell that chess piece, you're most likely going to make a lot more money in the long run, selling every good roll that you get, for say, that chess piece might have been, if it had rolled a little bit better, might have been worth a few exalt, right? That could pay for another base, it could pay for a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so we got spells have critical strike chance. This is not what we're looking for, right? However, in the case that you do get just the modifier that you're looking for, let's say that this is the modifier that we're looking for, right? We happen to be playing a build that wants spells have critical strike chance. It, say we rolled a tier one of it, right? If you were going to multi-mod this, meaning you were going to put the can have three crafted modifiers on it, generally what you would like to do is you would want to hit it with just the regal orb, hope that you get one other good modifier, and then fully multi-mod it from here, and then boom, your chess piece is done. However, that's not the modifier that we're looking for. So as I said previously, there's a much easier way to go about this. Instead of doing all of this long and difficult work where you generally aren't going to get very much out of it, there's another way. Now, I don't know how many of these I have. Serrated fossils, 12 of them here. We'll grab a few more of these. Now, on average, you're going to see a lot more of the modifier that you're looking for th through this method than you will the other one, right? However, this is going to fully just chaos roll items, basically. Now, the reason that I filled all of these up is that the chances of us actually getting the one that we want out of 12 is most likely not going to happen. However, what you'll notice is that when I use these on here, this one says more attack modifiers and fewer caster modifiers. If you're looking for something much more specific, you can use larger resonators, say a two resonator or a three resonator, and you can combine these fossils together to give you better chances at getting exactly what you want. However, for our purposes, we're just going to be using the simple primitive chaotic resonators. We'll apply this here and you'll start seeing it's almost as if we just used the chaos on the item, However, we're going to start getting more attack modifiers as we do this. Now we're getting a little bit unlucky that we haven't seen anything, but we're rolling some half decent chess pieces here. And eventually, hopefully, if we get lucky here, we will see a modifier that we're looking for. Okay, so here we go. 
This is not exactly the chess piece that we're looking for, but we do have attacks have plus their critical strike chance. This is tier one, so it could be rolled up if we wanted to. It's got a very low life roll, a very low resistance roll, and a very low armor roll. You do have a couple choices here. You can either continue to roll, or because you got the modifier that you want, you could attempt to hit this with a few orbs of annulment. This will remove one random modifier from the item. You could attempt to hit this with a few modify with a few orbs of annulment, and then multi-mod it if that's what you're so inclined to do. We didn't exactly get what we want, and I've got four more of these, so we might as well use them. See, we got it again. That's a lower version of the roll. This isn't something that I would stick with, but you can see how much more common that modifier is. Look, we got it a third time out of 12 already. So once again, not too great. Four times out of 12. So you can kind of see how much more often you're going to get this through fossils, right? So we used like 40 alterations or something like that. We never saw it a single time. We might see it in three or 400, right? However, we just use 12 of those fossils, and I'm pretty sure those fossils cost like three or four chaos each right now, and we saw it four times in 12 fossils. That's a little lucky, but we saw it quite a few more times already than we would have otherwise. Now this one, if I remember correctly, this took me probably 40 fossils is how many it took me before I saw this roll in particular. This was a pretty good result in my opinion. We got tier one life roll, the highest that you can get, a tier two flat armor roll, which is pretty good. We would have actually preferred a percentage armor roll if we could have gotten it because of the base armor being so high on this. Um, we had an open prefix, so we crafted percentage life and percentage mana. It was just the best thing available to us. And we managed to get two resist modifiers, one low, one high, and we got the modifier that we were looking for. Now this isn't the best chess piece, but it is quite good for our purposes. It gives us the crit that we need, and this is base crit. It gives us a bunch of health, bunch of resist, bunch of armor, right? You could take this one step further. We're not going to do this right now. However, these items here, these Hunter's Exalted Orbs and say the Awakener Orb here, allow you to add the influences to items, and it also allows you to combine the influences on items. So if we take this and we wanted to say, get another chess piece type, I'm not sure exactly um, what influence is used for the explodey chess piece. Um, it's either a crusader or something like that, but you could take two of those items and you could slam them together and it would give you a double influence chess piece. With that double influence chess piece, you could then attempt to roll both of those modifiers on the same chess piece. You could go for a chess piece that has attacks have additional to crit and um, enemies killed have a chance to explode for a certain amount of their health, right? You could get both of those modifiers together. That is a much higher level thing that honestly 99% of the player base doesn't really need to worry about. That is some very high level crafting that I will talk about in another high level crafting video. This is not that. This is just meant to be a simple video showing you how to go about crafting your own piece of gear. You could use this for just about anything. Let's log over to my other character here. We have the Burning Beefton and you'll see a very similar situation. I took a staff, which you can see right here, Go to our hideout so we don't have to deal with all these people and their crazy MTX. So I took this staff right here and I obtained this staff through the same exact methods that I just used. I crafted it up to a super high quality, got the six link, and then I started crafting it with single scorched fossils. What this eventually gave us is a staff with fire damage multi, fire damage of spells, plus three to level of all fire spell skill gems, which is what we were looking for. It has the fire resistance on it, which is good for our ascendancy and our helmet. And then we were able to craft chance to gain arcane surge when you kill an enemy. So we got this through the same exact method. This is a eclipse staff, an eye level 84 hunter eclipse staff. We crafted the staff ourselves. And a lot of the time what you're going to run into is that these items aren't readily available early on in the league. Not very many people have them. Not very many people craft things exactly like this. So with all of this information, hopefully you'll be able to craft some better items for yourself. So that's gonna be it guys. Make sure that if I helped you with this video that you leave it a like so that you can help me and also consider subscribing for more content similar to this. So get out there and craft some items and make sure that you stay safe out there in Ray Class and I'll see you guys in the next video.